Okay. Stephanie, I guess same question for you. You have uh, kind of backed into <coughs> racing as part of the, the mascot team. Stephanie does not wear the Hamiltonian, um, the, the Hambo Tony suit. She is his caretaker, shipper, <laughs> uh, groom, because Hambo Tony can't see very well. But, but um, Amy, tell us, first of all, I guess, um, what has been your experience in being Hambo Tony's handler? You have said the words, here's a pass, come to the Hamiltonian tens of thousands of times in the last four or five years. What has been the reaction of, of folks when you have broached that subject? And number two, what kind of entertainment options are you and your friends looking for and what drives your, your decisions? Um, well, the farther away you get from this area, I mean, if, you, if you're handing passes out in East Rutherford, if you're handing passes out in Lyndhurst, if you're, ha if you're handing passes out in Sea Caucus, people kind of know what you're talking about, so they're more likely to take the pass and not say anything or not ask questions or not look at you like you have three heads. But if you're going, I, I mean, my friend and I, the, the one that wears the costume, um, we went to, uh, we've been all over the place. We went to Gloucester County a couple of weeks ago. We went to Lopadcong. And the first reaction is, you came from where? to promote what? So we're like, oh, it's you know, the Hamiltonian. It's the big race. You know? And they're like, I have no idea what that is. I don't gamble. I don't know how to gamble. I, you know, you're trying to use my child to, to you know, get me here? What, what are you doing? And you know, basically, you're like, but no, it's more than that. It's, you know, it's a festival. It's this thing where. It's basically a family fun day. It's more than just gambling. It's more than just, you know, losing your money and you know, going home and taking loans out. It's more than that. It's, it's, it's this great event where everyone can, you know, be together and and uh, watch, you know, history be made and you know, spend time together. And that's what we try to sell. We're basically selling a product and and you know. Our first, our first thing is not just oh, it's you know the million dollar race. It's oh, there's so much for the family. There are you know, there's rides and games and face painters and clowns and all this stuff. And that's what's attracting you. It's it's the retro feel of the festival because the Hamiltonian started off as this like festival. You know, you have like a fair going on. And that's what the Meadowlands is trying to do. It's trying to bring back that fair feeling of the Hamiltonian. And that's what's really getting most of the families to the track. That and the fact that it's, it's what Roberto was saying. It's the competition of it. It's that dramatic ending. It's that, it's that feeling that everyone kind of wants to be a winner. And everyone wants to you know, feel accomplished. And everyone wants to see history be made. So. Stephanie, could, um, John alluded to the fact that, um, especially in this area, there are a million different entertainment uh, options to choose from. And certainly racing, while it is one of the, the less expensive, is not the least expensive, but it is the only one. You can't go to a minor league ball game and come home with a $157 food-based exacta. Mm -hmm. what, what, what kinds of, of things with yourself and your peer group enter into your thinking when you're deciding what to do on a night out? Are you strictly looking for the dramatic finish, as Roberto alluded to, or you guys are all pretty smart. You're in college. You know, I think when you're 20, you, you're smarter than all of the rest of us, right? Do you, do you uh, is, does it appeal to you that the more you study, the more you could possibly make? Does that enter into decision making? Um, I think with all the entertainment options, uh, basically what he was saying, you know, what's the cheapest night of fun? Um, I know that, uh, like for instance, in Philadelphia, Citizens Bank Park has like a dollar dog night, and that's what would attract me to an event. You know, <laughs> dollar hot dogs or dollar beers or you know something like that. Because it's true, when you get done with paying for all your food and everything, you you're left with like five dollars. And with college kids, you know, we intern and we don't get paid. You know, we go to school and you know we're we're eating top ramen every night. So it's it's basically what's cheap. And then also, uh, the, the point is, like, no one knows how to gamble. No one knows what an exacta is. No one knows what a trifecta is. No one knows the difference between a pacer and a trotter. So you need to kind of harness the market and, you know, 
print out literature or you know try to try to inform our age group of what this sport really is and how to bet and you know basically if I mean I see tons of 21 year olds in the Borgata you know betting and and uh, and gambling and it's it's the same thing you're you know you're putting money up and you're trying to make your money back and uh, and some and more so but they know how to bet in in a casino because there's slot machines and there's you know I mean poker is pretty uh, pretty widespread now I all my friends in high school played poker and I think poker is ridiculously hard but you know it's them reading up on it and it the information being available, and that's basically what harness racing needs to do. They need to make the information available to our age group. So education is